So what we're doing here is we're showcasing the reality of what happens to animals in the meat, dairy, and egg industries. Oh God. So each one of these screens is showing the standard practice, which means what the industry deems to be the highest level of welfare. Yeah, I know. But this is what actually happens behind those scenes. Have you ever see seen movie? anything like this before? Yeah, because I saw the movie. Um, which one? It just came out for one, one a year ago. It came out for one, one day. With Arnold Schwarzenegger? Um, game Changers. Game Changers. Yeah. And that was a Game Changer. Yeah, so this is a little different. Game Changers is more about like the how to live the lifestyle. This is more of why we should take the lifestyle seriously. Yeah. Uh, all right. I, I, how, so does this, how does this stuff make you feel when you see it? It's so difficult. Hard. Difficult? It's so difficult. It's safe to say you guys are... Hash. Say it again? I said I just had corned beef hash. Right, right. Yeah, bad. It's, Safe to say you guys are against animal abuse oh, or? Oh, God, are you yeah. kidding? We both own dogs. Are you mm. kidding me? All right, so you mentioned that you were against animal abuse. Sure. Do you think it's possible to be truly against animal abuse while directly contributing to it by buying the products of these industries? I don't know. It's a tough question. Right. Because I guess you're killing them, so that's abuse. You know, you're hurting them, so. Yeah, there's you know, no humane way to kill someone who doesn't want to die, right? No, when I, no because when I saw the Game Changer, and I saw it with a, a, a vegan person, and I'm not a big meat eater or anything, but it's, it was difficult to watch. And I know the Game Changer is about how you're going to live a healthier life, but also it showed about animals being slaughtered mm -hmm. and, and what they do to them and supposedly the antibiotic what? free. And the, yeah, when it, when it comes down to living a healthier life, the health crisis is only a true issue because we never took animal abuse seriously as a society and as a race. So what we're promoting here today is veganism, which is to live a lifestyle that excludes all animal-derived products as practicable and possible. And what do you think is like the biggest obstacle for you as an individual to be vegan? Well, at one point I think I thought it was more about where to get your protein but I know that there's many ways of getting protein. Absolutely. And would I absolutely be satisfied with eating a vegan lifestyle? You know, it, it, to open up a bag of lettuce with cucumbers and make your own dressing and stuff, like, am I gonna be satisfied, or make your own lasagna but vegan style? Would I be satisfied with eating that? You know, would I be missing some deliciousness from other things? But I know because I follow a few people on Instagram that are big, vegan people and like I never thought of it this way eggs they call it a liquid meat mm -hmm. when I ever heard it is a liquid meat that's like disgusting you know you think about that but I know I, I really should I know it's probably the way to go and health wise and especially with the game changer seeing yeah. how people have more energy or they're healthier or their skin's mm -hmm. better and, and even like you said about you know not being satisfied with right. some of the flavor profiles right. None of us here went vegan because we didn't like the taste of these products. But what we understood was that every choice that we made had a consequence. And does that 15 minutes of sensory pleasure justify what you see on the screens? I know, no, I know. No, no it doesn't. It truly doesn't. This is wonderful what you're doing. No, I look at I look at dogs and what they're doing in China, eating mm. dogs. I mean, it's disgusting. Yeah, and the only difference between, you know, dogs, pigs, cows, chickens is your perspective of them. Okay. And, and you mentioned skin and health and that sort of thing. I'd, I'd be curious to know, do you know the number one benefit of being vegan? Like, no. number one. No. Well, first, of course, it would be on the animals. They would no longer be tortured and abused on your behalf. But for you as an individual, if you say you're against animal abuse and you believe that what you see on these screens is evil, then you no longer have to be a hypocrite. And the only way to eliminate that hypocrisy out of your day-to-day -day life true. is very to align your actions with your very beliefs. Very true, but that's very true because that is hypocritical. What is like saying, you know, if I if this upsets me to see how they're being treated, but yet I'm letting it continue happening yep. in the way that I'm, yeah. that I'm, you know, and we talk about Black Lives Matter. I mean, how can I say I'm not against Black people, but I don't want my daughter to marry one? I would never say that because right. that that's hypocritical. You yeah. Know? I say, yeah, bring it on. Let my daughter marry a black guy because we're all human. But I agree. I mean, I've seen it is sad. Okay. Yeah. So even when you know you 
you believe you're against animal abuse and you're not an advocate for what happened, but when you are on a consumer level, you vote with your dollar. So every time you pay for the product, you say that this is okay and can please continue to do so because you create, created demand for it. So the producers will never do what's right by the animals. And any romanticized marketing they use is to make you as customers feel better. They do nothing to make the animals feel like better. Mainly raised. Yeah. They're still being killed. You know what, too? I think it's very, to me in my mind, it's like very easy to pick something up in your house to eat if you're hungry. And then if you churn, I mean, it takes years, I would imagine, to get into eating like vegetarian or vegan. It takes time. That's a stigma. No, I did it overnight. You did? Yeah. But like I said, once you understand the, yeah. once you understand the why, the how is the easiest thing. It only, it only can be hard when people look through their own eyes on a selfish level. If you take a look through the eyes of the animals or through their perspective, it becomes the easiest thing you've ever done. Because all it changes nothing about you as individuals. No, right. You just align your actions with your beliefs. You've given up wool and leather and all that. You do that. Absolutely. So right? what we're promoting is veganism. We right. Exclude all animal derived products as practicable and possible in this modern society. You check that for your uh, makeups and perfumes. I, I do. I, all I, I absolutely do. Free. Like yeah. I, I that that's funny because I absolutely do. No, we don't wear makeup anymore, but I absolutely do want to make sure that they're not that it's all not tested on animals. I cannot get that. Mm. So, how long have you guys been doing this for? This, we've been an organization for four years. Nice. And we do. So Friday I was in Providence, Rhode Island. Last night I was in Boston. And tonight, uh, today we're here in Plymouth. Oh, this is, be this is beautiful, but it's sad at all the same time. Mm -hmm. all right. And now that you have seen it and you have gotten some of the context of it. I'm telling you, when I ever saw the Game Changer, I, I, I ha like I said, they said, meat, eggs are liquid meat. Yeah. And like I said, I don't really eat a lot of meat, and I don't really eat, I don't even, I eat junk probably yeah. more than anything, but I will have something once in a while. But when I walked away from the Game Changer, I didn't walk away, honestly, to see, and this is honest to God, not because you're seeing it, I didn't walk away thinking, Jesus, I could be healthier. I mean, that was, but it was yeah. like, look at these poor animals, how right, they're being right. treated. And let me also they mention no quickly choice. about the eggs. Yeah. So, in the egg industry, males do not produce eggs. Absolutely. So, on their first day of life, when they're distinguished as male, what they call is waste management, they get grind it up on their first day of life just because it's more cost effective to get rid of them. So that's what we're promoting here. The use is the abuse. This is inherently wrong and you mentioned other injustices. So we were taking the same approach to other injustices as animal abuse. We don't want to reduce it. We don't want to figure out a way to do it better. We want to look at it as something that's inherently wrong in our society and eradicate it accordingly. You know, so now that you you know we had these conversations I think, and no, I, know. I think I need to discuss it again. So what's myself. Massachusetts State doing? Commonwealth. What are they doing? See, so what we're here doing is talking on an individual level. I can't control oh, what the city like does. I'm not a political not advocate or anything bills. like that oh, okay. because those those bills and order are protecting businesses and producers. As consumers, we can control the demand and force the change as the majority. Exactly. So now that you understand the moral imperative and the context of this conversation, it's in your hands. Yeah. And I like to know, like you know, I'm curious, like what are you going to do moving out of here, thinking about it, diving well, into the? Well, I just got done saying that tomorrow I need to start changing the way I'm eating. I we just I just said that to you. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a good time to look at what I'm eating and, and start differently. And I and I'm not the greatest cook. So like to start making stuff, but I guess Oh there there's a there's simplified up. versions of I everything. Know. We live in a modern society now, there's literally a substitution for everything. I know. Endless food choices. I know. I know. Well Glad that I stopped and talked to you. So right here, all this footage that we pulled comes from this documentary, Dominion. It's free to watch. Oh, okay. okay. Um, this speech right here has over five million views by a man named Gary Yarovsky. Okay. And then some of this stuff right here is like resources as far as the how goes. Okay. But what I'm speaking to you about is the why. And once you understand the moral imperative, some of these other things are here to help you out along okay. the way and give you some tools and resources. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. What's I really your name? My name is Jacob. Nice to meet you. Thanks, yeah. Jacob. Thank you so much. This shouldn't be shaking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry.
And you know, yeah, just remember it. that until the day that you do decide to align your actions with your beliefs, that animals will be abused on your behalf. So just decide what side of history exactly you want right. to be on. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so All right, so I just finished up with that conversation. I was a bit nervous at first because she made me wait until her mother came over, and I wasn't sure of how receptive they were going to be as a unit. She seemed to pick up a bit in the beginning. She mentioned things like her health, her skin, the weight, even taste and being satisfied. So she was really focused around the how to live this lifestyle. But what I did was I really drove home the moral imperative and made her understand that every choice that she makes has a consequence. And by the end of the conversation, I believe we got there, held her to account, gave her the context and provided her with the, with the information moving forward. And that's really all we can do. And I think that went really well. I'm happy with it.